Okay, man, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Now, now come on, now crank this motherfucker up. <laughs> And it is NBA playoff time. And so we must tune back in to the National Basketball Association. We must check and see if our predictions this year were good. We must tell you the future about what will happen in the playoffs, which, you know, it, it's right as long as you don't check what we did. Last, just believe me that we were 100% correct last year. That, that Probably was, better than most uh, that you watched on television make predictions about the year, nonetheless. That is true, yes. But also, don't check. Um, I am joined, as always, to discuss, to discuss basketball and all things tall people with resident tall person, Pete Busby. Hello, Pete. Hey, hey everybody. Excited to talk hoops. I uh, can't wait till the podcast has its own gambling scandal. I'm sure it's right down down the lane. It's coming, rest assured. Uh, fun fact for this one, I have a, a basketball statistic that blew my mind. During the third quarter against the Knicks in the previous game, the Sixers scored more than 200 points per 100 possessions. That's insane. More than 200? Yeah, it was like 208 points per 100 possessions during that third quarter. Wow. The Nuggets during their comeback against the Lakers had a, like the last five minutes they scored two hundred points per possession or two hundred equally per, insane yeah <laughs> per per possessions. possessions per one they finished the game with ninety eight thousand points it was incredible <laughs> it was unprecedented they found turns out in the in the rule book there was this weird rule about if you shoot from a specific spot on the floor it's worth that much it's as James um, Na- Doctor James Naismith intended. Mm-hmm. Or as the big lean, big three intended, have a spot for four points. That's true. What was what was Name Smith a doctor of? Basketball. I'm gonna look that up. Continue the intros. I'm gonna look it up. He was a doctor, like Doctor uh, Doctor J is a doctor. Um, ah, I got it. No, I actually look it up. Look it up. I'm making that up. I'm lying. Um, we are also joined. That other voice you heard is Chris Zombie Pie Redacted. Hello, ZP. Best- Part of waking up is recording the Hoops podcasts with my buds. <laughs> That's true. How are you feeling this this great morning, this great basketball day? Uh, let's talk about it as we go. I mean, obviously, a season that had things happen, whether they were good or bad, we'll talk. Things are happening. That they are. Things are happening. And one thing that's happening is this contact information that you could use to get in touch with the show. You can get in touch with the show at DeepListensPod on Twitter, DeepListens.Libsyn.com. We have our comment sections and DeepListensPodcast at gmail.com. You can support the show on Patreon.com slash DeepListens, which we've got some hot stuff going on beyond just getting access to the Discord. If we get to our 40 patron goal, we will have to play Mass Effect Andromeda. That's coming. Um, we also have some merch in the works, so get in the Discord if you want to see some of the initial uh, ideas there. And we also might have a special anime show that may or may not be coming soon for patron for patrons. Yeah, we might have a a, a, a Patreon exclusive show. It's a show. It's something that we've been talking about on the Discord. If you want more details about what this will entail, because we're not watching your fucking One Piece or your Jujutsu Kaisen. This is a show for cultured people who appreciate (laughs) anime for what it is. Okay? Yes. So, James Naismith, he did receive honorary doctorates for his contribution to the world in basketball, but... According to his Wikipedia page, seven years after inventing basketball, Naismith received his medical degree in Denver in 1898. So he actually was like a real medical doctor. From in Denver, dang. Wonder if there's some sort of memorial 
in the city. Like, I know that he was like a physical education teacher that before yes. like moving up like that part is indisputed. But, um, you know, as much as we like to say that basketball is an American uh, invention, let's not forget the fact that James Maysif is unfortunately Canadian. Yes, yep. it's very unfortunate. Well, I'm glad that he invented ba- uh, basketball and not those little, like, scooters that you had to sit on that always crushed your fingers in PE. Oh, uh, floor hockey? Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, because that's – that's whoever invented that is cursed. Um, as yeah, I got – so it was from Gross, <laughs> Gross Medical College in Denver, Colorado. Afterward, that was the name at the time. Now it's the University of Colorado School of Medicine. <laughs> oh, Nice. I do appreciate at least our wonderful sport of basketball definitively has a creator, an author, rather than, you know, something like baseball needing to try to hide the fact that it may, might not be American. You just accept the fact that, like, you know, this James Naismith guy, he really liked people bouncing a ball on the floor and trying to put him in a basket. No Abner Suppose- Double Day bullshit. Supposedly, he's also credited with inventing the protective helmet for football players. What? Oh, that's been really useful. Yeah, right. <laughs> Naismith did a lot. Yeah, you know, his look, encephalitis look. of the brain still seems to be, uh, look, you know. It's a good idea. Just because he, in the 1800s, couldn't come up with a, a better helmet doesn't mean that uh, he was wrong. Um, all right, so let's turn our attention to the NBA playoffs, but before we do, we will do our our usual check in. ZP, let's start with you because uh, we're not going to discuss your team um, in the playoff portion. Unfortunately, uh, we've got tricked. Nope. No, I wouldn't say it's a trick. the 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 reality is is that the Kings are kind of where I think the best comparison is is like the Kings are where the uh, Knicks were. The year after they made the playoffs for the first time with Tibbs and then they didn't make the playoffs the second time. Uh, There's no going around it. The Kings are a poorly composed team that have some immediate needs that upper management refuse steadfastly to address, i.e., you know, wing defense in particular, particular. And then uh, the good news is, is that the Kings have Keegan Murray, which continues who continues to be maybe one of the better shot creators for the rest of that like hooping team overall but yeah the true highlight has to be just myrtleizing the dynasty of the warriors like at least we did that part for everybody um yeah you got to spoil uh the warriors which was i i really appreciated like the kings missing players playing against i believe the healthy warriors a healthy Warriors. A healthy Warriors team. They still won very comfortably. It was beyond tedious having to hear about how the Warriors were going to pull it out this year. I don't want to hear about Brandon Pajemski anymore um, as like, man, you this guy, he's something. It's like, it, the Warriors draft a league average player and everyone loses their damn minds because people pay attention to the Warriors in a way that they don't other teams. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Sacramento Kings. Thank you for lighting the beam one last time. And uh, I, I don't know. Even if they had won against a Zionless uh, Pelicans team, let's not let's not dance around the fact that they would have gotten absolutely ass blasted by the Thunder. Like, just that's probably as far as they would have gone if they had gotten past that. Losing Kevin Herter is a uh, meh because he basically had the worst year of it of his uh, professional career, but not having Malik Monk in any playoff game whatsoever was definitely like the cherry on top of the, yeah, this team's probably not going very far. Yeah. The I... good news is, is as long as they uh, bring back Mike Brown, at least they finally have a stable coaching situation. But um, yeah, there's a lot of open ended questions with the Kings. Uh, the biggest one has to be, they're probably going to lose Malik Monk. So what are we doing after that? What's the team going to do in response to losing one of the better bench players that they've had the last 10 years? Maybe they can uh, sign James Booknight, who was uh, no longer on the Hornets, 
who was drafted to be the Malik Monk replacement. Uh, I mean, he's out of the NBA, so he's available. Uh, maybe he'll he'll turn the corner uh, in Sacramento just like Malik Monk did. I don't know. I, I am a little bit less rosy about the Kings' future simply because they have two max contracts and not, Sabonis... Sabonis doesn't deserve one. Um, no, that's not true. I mean, the man was like the man. The only person who's doing more double doubles is is Jokic. Like yeah, he, they, he, he 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 does very well. He accumulates uh, stats. The prob- he no, does. He no, that's not true. Stats. He actually is one of the better passers for them. The problem is, is that the Kings keep putting him into a position to be Jokic. He's not Jokic in terms of being a playmaker. He's better for what for his position at that, but they shouldn't put him in the position of being their version of Jokic. Um, What's the correlation between like team rebounding and winning? Like, is it useful that Sabonis is getting thirteen rebounds a game? I mean, someone on that team has to. He's the yeah, only right. someone has rebounder to. on the team. Um, so is it helpful that they're all aggregating to him? No. Well, I'll put it to you this way. Um, Andre Drummond is maybe one of the top 10 rebounders in the history of the NBA. Maybe 20. Like, he's very good at rebounding. And he is a backup center. And do, it does not matter. Uh, look, Andre Drummond is a backup, a virtually out-of-the-league player for reasons that are not just because all he did was rebound. No, I'm um, just saying, like, being an ex- exceptional rebounder. Like, you can be Apex top 1% rebounder, and uh, if you're not— He was a really good rebounder. What What was that? He was a really—like, he averaged 16 rebounds a game in 2018. Yeah, like, he's he's elite. He's coming off the bench and getting, like, 20 minutes a game, and he's still getting, like, 10 rebounds. It's, it's wild what he does. Um, but if you're not an excellent defensive player— or like a superlative offensive player, rebounding alone is not enough. I think that the the real problem was is uh, the upper management, Monte McNair, seems to really be married to players that I don't know if this is the actual direction to go. My guy, like I was impressed by what Keon Ellis was able to do in that that game, must win game against the Warriors, but long term. I don't know. Maybe. Possibly. Like, they're consistently inconsistent because the players that they currently have, which usually leads to Monte McNair not making these big, bigger deals during free agency or during the offseason, they might be good. They're probably not, but they might be good. Um, Yeah, I don't know. If uh, the big problem was is the the team overall or, you know, management decided that, hey, this team's fine as is when clearly the Western Conference has gotten better. And that's the other, like, to go to the side of maybe some of the fans of the Kings fandom is like the disparity between the Eastern and Western Conference and the fact that the teams that entered the play in tournament would have been like the third or fourth seed on the Eastern Conference is the actual worst. The actual yeah. like bottom of the barrel, like this is completely and totally unacceptable. Please get rid of conferences. They can det- they can determine which games you play and how many times you get matchups against particular teams, but this is genuinely a clown show. Like this is a clown show. Yeah, the Warriors and the uh and the Kings are so much better than the Bulls and the Hawks, despite that Bulls being flawed Hawks teams. game was a travesty. Like if if it does lead to Trey Young uh, not being tapped to be the second coming of Christ at Atlanta, like great, good, thank God, take that idea to the back shed and just put a bullet in its head. But uh, yeah. Like yeah. the fact that uh, the Atlanta Hawks, which were the tenth seed in Indy Plan, would have been like completely out of the playoffs if they were on the Western Conference. Like I, I don't even like this is. We we have this conversation I think every single year, but the fact that you know 
two teams that were basically 10, no, virtually, like literally 10 games above 500 didn't make the playoffs. And then the Eastern Conference presented us with the Bulls and the Hawks. Uh, The fuck? Pete, Pete, I have a fun fact question for you. Ooh, excellent. First, um, sure. how many times in the last 20 years do you think the Eastern Conference won more head-to-head games against the Western Conference than vice versa? Oh, God, last 10 years? 20. 20 years. 20 years. i got to think all the way back to 2004 now. Yeah, how many times? Just just number of times in that 20-year time frame. Four? Too generous. Three. Oof, I was close, though. You were, yeah. So, like, the East has been worse than the West for almost 20 years um, by a lot, too. Like, it's usually, like, a 60 per- 60% uh, winning percentage for the Western Conference teams. Like, it's it's up there. So, I, I just to give credence to ZP's point, like, the conferences aren't close. And the two, no. the eight, uh, 9 and the 10 seed in the East would have been the twelve seed, 11 seed <laughs> or 12 seed in the West, which is a joke. Uh, Pete, you were going to make a point. Yeah. Speaking of Chicago, so I've, I've gone down a rebounding rabbit hole now. Sabonis was third in the league this year in offensive rebounds, which is the only sort of rebounding I really care about. Mm-hmm. But number four was Andre Drummond at 3.4 <laughs> <laughs> offensive rebounds per game, which is insane because uh... he's only playing 17 minutes. I've, like everybody else up there is at least over twenty five, and most are over thirty. Yeah, he's he's absurd. Like the fact that he's not a starter, or like starter worthy. Like he's not a starter, and it's I think the right decision is just such a bummer in some ways um, that we've got like one of the most elite players at a skill in NBA history, and he's just like he's in Chicago doing nothing. It sucks. Um, but yeah, to my earlier point on Sabonis, like he is a regular, he's like Julius Randall in my opinion. He is a regular season innings eater. He will get you a certain number of wins. He's got, he will raise your floor to like around 500 almost by himself. And then as soon as you get to the playoffs, he is unplayable. He is like... I mean, he's a small forward playing center. Like, he's small forward sized. Like, he tries really hard, but he he can't shoot outside of, like, 10 or 15 feet consistently. He can't stretch to the three-point line. He's awful on defense. Um, and his offensive skill is just, like, bludgeoning people with his shoulder and then shooting a left-handed hook shot or a left-handed layup. And, like... When you're in the regular season, you get enough chump centers that you can do that too. Um, some teams don't even have a real center. And then, yeah, he's just stronger than them and he tries harder. But when you get to the playoffs, you have to play against actual centers who are generally quite skilled. And his shtick just doesn't work anymore. And it's pl- like he's been in the league a long time now. It's We have a lot of evidence that unless he improves his skill set in some way, I don't think lateral quickness is going to come, but if he was able to expand his scoring um, so that people had to respect him more from the perimeter, it, then maybe you can make this work. Um, but right now, if you're going to max him out, and they actually, the, the Kings, instead of bringing in another player, they gave him their cap room last year. Uh, so it's, they could have afforded another above average player, and they just decided not to um, because they thought they, hey, Saponis earned a raise. Um, so they put all of their eggs into Sabonis and Fox and Fox is really good. I think Fox is someone who could scale up into the playoffs just fine. But if you're going to have all of your money invested in Fox and Sabonis, and that's the two, those are the two guys you're going to pay. You just can't afford to pay the depth around. Like they're not good enough to elevate mediocre players. And you can't afford to sign better ones. Yeah, they've already kind of done that with uh, Malik Monk. I, I'm absolutely confident that this is the best we'll ever see of Malik Monk. And he's going to get paid. And we're going to have that talk about, aha, who got rope doped into overpaying for Malik Monk? Oh, yes. I don't think that you like, he's going to have. I'm, I don't think that Malik Monk will have the fall that we are 
all enjoying of like Jordan Poole, but the same concept is going to apply where Malik Monk is going to get paid and then he's going to be super inefficient the season afterwards. And then we're all going to be like, wow, that's a bad contract. Yes. I mean, he's going to get the Tyler Hero contract and then I'm going to look at it and go, why did you pay this man? You, yes, he was good in 15 minute to 20 minute stretches off the bench, but you can't, I don't think you can base your offense around him. And if you can't base your offense around him, you can't max him out. Um, but that, that's just my problem. Back to my point on the Kings. Like you, it's really hard if your best player is probably De'Aaron Fox and he is maybe like the, what, seventh or eighth best point guard in the NBA, something like that. Like, that's just a tough, other teams have the top seven, like, you know, <laughs> like that's a tough way to go. And then Sabonis is, in the regular season, a force. Um, He will guarantee you a play-in spot. Um, But then come playoff time, he gets, you know, exposed pretty badly. And that's just, it's tough to have that much of your salary tied up in in those two players. So, well, Sabonis specifically. Fox, I think you could get away with if if your second player was a higher caliber guy. Um, But, yeah, I think we're kind of in... I'm a, I said this, I forget if I said this last year, but I think this might be Joe Johnson Hawks territory. Like, uh, I think that the, there's a little bit, I think there's a little bit more flexibility that you're, you're not like next year. Harrison Barnes is going to be on an expiring contract. He has one more year left of his contract and the same thing is going to apply to Tyler, Kevin Herter. So there's some will appeal have some with the, there will there is some appeal even to those players that only have one year left on their deals. Um, yeah, they and, just and need then, to get yeah. someone. They need to get like two or three really good role players, I think, to offset the fact that their top end talent is is not as high as some of these other really elite teams that they're gonna have to play. Um, but anyways, it's but yeah. not just me with a weirdly uh, gangly, incomplete team that's. Uh, been incons- consistently inconsistent. Pete, how's life? <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for Mo Bamba to take a leap. I think he's finally in the the situation he needs, and I think during these playoffs, we're really going to see him shine. Look, if you don't bring it after Drake names a song after you, <laughs> I don't know that he. Yeah, I don't think that it's coming around. I mean the the answer with the Sixers is is the same thing. The answer has been. For the last, I don't know, not seven years, but at least, you know, four or five, we go as far as JoJo takes us. You know, we dropped 50 on the Knicks. So long as he can keep dropping a a 50 piece on everybody we go up against, Sixers are going to take this all the way. Not even worried. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his injury history is so preposterous at this point. Like he's 32. Like it's not going to get better. It's not. I mean, it, I didn't see Bell's palsy coming. Yeah, I, I was not. I was not prepared to find out that the man had Bell's palsy. Uh, which, for those who don't know, that is a. a I guess, I think it's a viral condition, uh, but it leads to paralysis in half of your face, basically. So if you've seen any footage of Joel Embiid, like only one side of his face blinking or like reacting. That is why. Um, yeah. I thought like when he hurt his knee in the first game against the Knicks and he was down on the floor and only half of his face was like emoting. I was like, Oh man, did he get like a suffer a neurological condition right here? Like did something really, was it not the knee? Did something else happen? And it turned out that he has been going through some stuff, but man, I, I can no longer, like make fun of his toughness in any way, despite you know some like nuggets ducking stuff that that still it hap- Look, I think there's a case to be made um, in previous seasons, but dude is gutting it out. That's for sure. He is he is trying his damnedest to put the uh, playoff choker stuff behind him. He is, but I mean it's just it's it's a, it's a time clock. You know what I mean, like. As much as I would love JoJo to succeed, you know, both as a Sixers fan and because he seems like a a pretty nice dude overall, I guess. You know, you never like to see people get hurt. It's just it's it's like Zion, you know what I mean? Like it's just you're just waiting for the next one. Yeah, and it's it's like Zion if Zion kept this exact same trajectory for six more years. Yeah, like 
Joel. And if Zion was like, was weirdly seven inches taller, but somehow, you know, 40 pounds lighter. <laughs> that's not, the, Zion's not that. Come on. <laughs> Come on. That's rude. That was me. That was me to Zion. Zion, if you're listening, I apologize. Obviously, I'm just jealous of your massive successes. Yeah. So it, he's just gotten a knee injury. Like, he's never played 70 games in a season. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's tough, like, this late in his career to not have had a single healthy playoff run or season, and I don't know that we ever will get one. Um, I think that there's just a fundamental problem with large man who falls a lot um, as an archetype, especially one who had a lot of knee injuries and leg injuries. Like, he and Anthony yeah. Davis ha- have a similar fall-all-the-time uh, game, and it it's tough. Like not ever, it, it's not all like causality. I'm sure, but it, it can't be good for you. No. I would think. But then, like, you look at his box score from the like the last game against the Knicks, and he scored 50 points on 19 shots. Like, yeah, who it's does that? It's insane. Yeah. It's one of the most absurd scoring outputs you've ever se- I've ever seen. Like that's so he's not just like volume chucking or something. Um, which some of his worst games in the playoffs, that's what it's been, is he just, like, becomes a black hole, and he gets his numbers, but really inefficiently. Like, he's playing the best he's ever played. Like, he was... Yep. I, early in the season, when he was looking like an MVP, I was starting to think, okay, he's, he's doing it. Like, he's living up to all of the promise, and, you know, he's baptizing these awful teams, so it's really hard for me to uh, understand what's going to happen when he has to play hard teams. But in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, but he's not going to be able to keep this up. Pete, let me give you a, a theory I had and see, tell sure. me if this is something that uh, makes sense to you. So Joel Embiid went at the beginning of the season had, I believe, one of the top five usage rates of all time. He was okay. over 40% yeah. usage. Sounds um, accurate. On the season, basically every single play ran through him. Um, do you, when I saw that and saw that how that correlated with his numbers, that was when I said this is not going to end well, because giving that big of a load to someone with his injury history seemed like a great way to wrench some wins and to make Joel look really good, uh, but not a way to actually keep him healthy for a whole season. Does, does that read as true, or do you think that's you know, the way he was playing, he probably could have kept it up because it was a lot of jump shooting and not, no. you know, slamming into people. No, like every time he leaves the floor, like there's like what some percentage chance that it, something's going to crack when he lands. So like that usage rate, I think it pretty obviously would be unsustainable. I'd like to add one additional piece to your theory, though, Gino. And this is sort of half baked, so stick with me for a second. I think Philadelphia as a city might fetishize massive usage rates more than any other city. At least like basketball wise, like you can think of it like with Will Chamberlain and then Allen Iverson, especially, I think we just like seeing one dominant player drag, a, we'll call it what it is, drag a pretty mediocre team as far as they can. Yeah. There's definitely a appreciation Mm. of heroes, hero ball in Philly. Yes, but is it as bad as the Kobe era Lakers fans? Mm. Like that era in particular, mm, I think might overpower you solo you guys alone. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Just on volume of people. The I fact think. that we still have to listen to people ranking Kobe like above LeBron James because of the, that slice of NBA fandom alone. It's Just putting it terrible. out there. Um, but I just want to – sorry. Oh, no. All I was going to say is uh, Philly did run Andre Iguodala out of town because he wasn't an iso ball lunatic. Um, so they, like, lost good players because they just couldn't conceptualize a best player whose dominant skill was passing. Um, go ahead, ZP. Okay. So one correction uh, – before I ask Pete a couple of questions. Uh, first off, uh, Mo Bamba was not a Drake sh- song. It was a Sheck West song. That's uh, <laughs> just a correct correction of something that, uh, in fact, it was on the the album Mud Boy. Um, I said, thank you for that to, correction. That was very important. Pete. Another L for Mo Bamba. 
<laughs> yeah. To pee. I guess I have two questions. First off, what's the uh, what's the overall sentiment about the Kyle Lowry experiment right now? Because when it first happened, people were super excited. And then I think everyone that likes the 76ers has realized, oh, wait, we have Kyle Lowry in the year of our Lord 2024. Yeah. I think Kyle Lowry's like main benefit, like the first off, you know, Villanova alum, so local boy comes home. But I think his like big benefit is just to stand next to Tyrese Maxey. Like I think there's utility in not having Maxey be the point guard, and I think Kyle Lowry fulfills that responsibility admirably. Yeah, I, he, Kyle is not. Kyle is a pass for, he's always been a pass first player, but more so now than ever before. Um, and Maxi is not that like he is a scoring guard. Um, first he's, and foremost, he's uh, I'll give, this is a, an imperfect analogy, but I'll throw it out for my Philly boys. He's sort of like Eric snow, you know, like back when Iverson was around, Eric snow was the nominal point guard. And his only job was to be tall and be near Allen Iverson. Like that's all he had to do as a point guard. Kyle Lowry, not tall, but I think his job is just to be near Tyrese and do sort of low stakes, nominal point guard things. Yeah. The, to like bring the ball up the floor. So Tyrese doesn't have to every single time and, you know, run, call out a set occasionally. Um, All right. My other question is looking at the last three games against the Knicks, do you really want Tyrese Maxey taking this number of threes? Like, do you want eight, what was it, so 11, bad. nine? Like, almost damn near consistently taking 10 per game. Against the Knicks, a, a team that is, let's say, also inconsistent about their ability to sink threes. Like, do you, do you actually want Tyrese Maxey to take this this amount of threes every game? I no, I, I definitely do not. I'm also curious. I mean, like, I know JoJo took seven in the last game. I'm curious how many he's taking per game, too. I'm trying to pull up the box score now. I mean, he's taking a ton, but I think some of that is just a factor of he can't move the way he yeah. normally can. So he's, like, if the options are take a three, which he shoots at, like, 40%, which he's a great three-point shooter, um, or try to do something off the dribble with this massive knee brace into – just the den of wolves that is the Knicks defense. Um, yeah, he, this will probably keep him healthier. He took nine in the last game. I haven't been able to pull up the first one. But yeah, like between them, they shot seven for 20, which, and that's mostly because Maxi was shooting well. That's not terrible, but I mean, for your, for two guys who could get to the cup when healthy, pretty much whenever they want, I don't like to see them taking 23s between them. Yeah, I I just think that this is a concession to the fact that jo, Joel can't roll the way he normally does. Um, yeah. And operating at the mid post is a little bit tougher because he's not really threatening to blow by people. Um, like, not that he can't. What was Max, he just sh sh shouldn't. What was Maxie's percentage during the season? I think he was in the 40s. Um, Pull it up can, now. Yeah, get basketball right. Three, 373. 373 on eight attempts per game. So, like, obviously a good three-point shooter. And it's in line with his attempts yeah. per game during the regular season. Although but it's a lot of variance. Gonna, yeah, those numbers are going to be skewed by the fact that he played without Joel for a while. But, yeah, yeah I mean, I but... think Philly's got a chance. Um, I, we'll go over this when we do our predictions, but I think Philly is in a decent spot here against the Knicks. Yeah, you, you can't discount Thibodeau causing all of his players' knees to explode. Um, you've got that. I mean, if you're worried about JoJo's health, uh, Tibbs, he's going to give fucking Jalen Brunson 45 minutes, and Brunson's not going to complain. You know that. He's going to give Brunson 45 minutes, and then he I, will never make an adjustment. Up. Uh, so <laughs> he gave Brunson 45 minutes, 38 minutes, and then 41 minutes. And then he's also giving as many minutes to Josh Hart, which, um, yeah, you know what, Tibbs, he don't change. He don't change. No. I should I should know this after this much time as a basketball fan, but does the NBA playoffs recede after the first round? No. Okay. 
No, it does not. No. So the Knicks. So, I'm, yeah, I'm just looking at like the the matchups, and I'm like, they're not like if you had JoJo like fairly healthy, they're not bad until you would have to hit the Celtics. Yeah, they would be the away team for all future rounds, but yeah. the Bucks haven't looked good, and Giannis is hurt. The Pacers are beatable, and the Seventy Six are like the Sixers should be favored against whichever team comes out of Bucks Pacers, but um. You never know, because Joel might not be healthy. Who who knows? Like yeah, he's, that's, that's always the question mark. He's game to game every single game, so who knows? Um, and and uh, Pete, do you want to shout out Nick Batum for saving the season? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anytime Nick Batum does something good, my only thought was, I wish it was Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> just Rocco sitting on the bench with his injuries. Like, it, yeah, the Anthony just... Melton low-key, like, important that he's missing, too. So over to the Nuggets, my preferred team. Uh, it's going pretty great. Um, you don't want. I didn't... You don't want to do. You don't want to do a, a quick analysis of uh, Knicks. Knicks at all, Gino? At, at all? Zero? No. The, the Knicks are the Knicks. Like they're they play a Tom Thibodeau defense. They um, give their best players way too many minutes. They try super duper hard. Um, you know they're well coached. I should say they're consistently coached. Like Tom Thibodeau is a very good coach for wrenching wins out of rosters that shouldn't get them. Um, and then the playoffs come and other coaches make adjustments and have people who are healthy. And Tom Thibodeau's team usually caps out in the first or second round. So they could definitely beat the 76ers. I think that they are better than the 76ers um, as currently constructed just because Joel's hurt. Um, and I don't know how much he's going to play these next few games. We'll see. Uh, but I think the Knicks can definitely beat them just with offensive rebounding and gumption and all that stuff. But they're going to eventually run into a team that they can't just bully. And then uh, they're going to lose. It, it wouldn't surprise me if either team won the series. I'm going to lean towards the Knicks just because they've got the two wins already. Um, and I think that, like, Brunson hasn't had a great game yet. Um, Joel's been playing out of his gourd, and they're like close games. Um, so I'd lean Knicks, but Tom Thibodeau is maybe my least favorite good coach in the NBA. Do you count Doc Rivers as a good coach? No, I think he's a bad okay. coach and shouldn't have a job anymore. And we need That's to stop. Like, who is he? Who's. Does he have something on someone in the NBA office? Like, is he the most charismatic man in the world? Like, how does he keep getting these jobs? I don't know. Like, what's the last team that he's coached to better than their roster told you they would do? Yeah, until you added that caveat, I was going to say probably the 2000 Celtics or 2007 Celtics. But then I was like, oh, wait, they had three, we'll call them borderline Hall of Famers. Three Hall of Famers, like – one Hall well, of Fame with Pierce a gets in? Oh yeah, like Garnett. Uh, oh yeah, hundred percent. Allen will yeah. get in. You think Pierce will? Yeah, I, I think Paul 100%. Pierce will get into the Hall of Fame. He was Despite a his uh, foolery on national television, he's that'll have its <laughs> own ro- how wing. He was. That'll have his own wing. <laughs> IG that's live. A, that's wing. its own. Yeah. The that's IG live wing platform. where John Morant and Paul Pierce hang out. Yeah, they're definitely going to put John Moran. That's something the NBA wants to highlight. Look, you guys. It's, it's, oh, yeah, it's, Pierce was a 10 a time All Star. He gets in. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he took that Celtics team exactly as far as they were expected to go. And then every team afterwards has, has fallen short of expectations. It's crazy. I don't understand how he keeps getting jobs. I don't get it. Like, Adrian, looking at the Adrian Griffin Bucks and then the Doc Rivers Bucks. And then looking at their stats, they're the same damn team. Like the only difference is they're losing more games. They're the same. Like the only difference is that occasionally the Bucks get back on defense now in transition. Occasionally, the (sighs) the biggest accomplishment of Doc Rivers' career is probably Kendrick Perkins' career as an analyst. Yes, he oversold that man so much that now we have to hear him, and it's horrible. And I hate him for it. Yep. Um, well, that's my Knicks analysis. Nuggets analysis, they're great. 
They're they're the, probably the best team in the West. Um, that stupid Spurs loss, I swear, if they lose to the Timberwolves because they are in this 2-3 instead of the 1-4, I'm going to be so mad. Um, but, look, you know, they played really well. They had a better season than they did last year somehow. And uh, they're going to go as far as Nikola Jokic can take them, and that's, you know, potentially a title. Um, yep. I, I will say everyone who said that Bruce Brown being gone was like a fatal flaw can, uh, you can take away their, you, you don't have to listen to them anymore. Like everyone it, actually, no, Bruce Brown was an actual loss, but like not that big a deal. Anyone who said Jeff green was a meaningful loss. Um, fuck what the hell? Like, did you watch the team ever other than like the Lakers series last year? Like to watch come Jeff on. green ever. Yeah. Have you, watched, I think- have you watched Jeff green play? <laughs> Come on. I think that there has been some, let's say, like Steve Kerr derpy coasting coaching decisions on the Denver Nuggets. It's like, why is Aaron Gordon not getting more time, especially with defensive assignments when he's actually good at that at this point in his career? Um, And yeah, please, uh, please beat the please beat the Lakers. I mean, as we speak right now, the Nuggets are up three to one. Uh, they haven't Gentleman played sweep. a good game yet, and they're still up three one, which is wild. What was that, Pete? It, it, it's a gentleman's sweep. Like, I'm surprised the Lakers even got one. Yeah, yeah. So th- I, I think that they'll be fine there. But yeah, it's just uh, it, it's tough. Like the Nuggets are really they're really good. They play really well, but they, um, tend to give the exact amount they would need to win a game and not one ounce more of effort. Um, and so they don't blow teams out hardly at all. That's, I mean, that's a function of Jokic. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. That's how he lives his life. Yeah. yeah. He, but it's funny that he set his standard as like the best player in the world though. Like he does exactly what he needs to do to be the best player of the world and what not, and not one ounce more. <laughs> It's like, what the hell, man? Um, but yeah, Nuggets doing well. So let's turn yeah. our attention now to oh, do we want to start with playoff predictions or with uh, how we did on our our preseason awards? Let's do the let's do the awards since the regular yeah. season. Okay. Uh, so rookie of the year, uh, Pete and ZP, you both had Chet and I had Wemby. I think I'm going to take that one, but we we were correct. We got the top two. For sure. Yeah, it, I mean, the only reason I didn't pick Wemby was because it was boring. I mean, nobody, I think, is surprised he took it. Yeah, it was, you know, it's wild how good Chet is, too, though. Like, True. both of these guys are so deserving. And, like, Chet is that second-year rookie sort of deal, so he gets a little bit of a bump there, and he's also older. Um, but, boy, he he's a difference maker already, which is not common for a player as young as he is. Um, for sixth man of the year, uh, Pete had Bobby Portis, ZP had Emmanuel quickly, and I had Cam Thomas. ZP, we both got hit with the, uh, player too good to stay on the bench problem. Yeah, I, yep, yep. Um, but we were all wrong. Nas Reed won. Uh, Malik Monk was, uh, a close second. Um, and honestly, ZP, that's on you for not picking yeah. Malik Monk. Yeah, I shouldn't have picked Malik Monk. I thought that. My prediction of Malik Monk's career trajectory for next year, obviously when he gets paid, was going to happen this year. It's like, ah, the, him shooting well was an aberration. It's not going to be uh, consistent, but, hey, well, yep. Should have gone with him. Would have had an excuse to pick a Kings player on the team for an award. But, yeah, uh, Nas Reed winning it, I mean, as with so many of these awards, like getting hurt in the last – a few weeks of the season basically makes everyone forget that you exist. Um, so don't, don't get hurt at the end of the year is my recommendation. If you're going to get hurt and try to win an award, get hurt at the beginning of the season where all of the voters forget that you even got hurt. Um, and they I just, like six man. That, that said, uh, I don't feel bad about Nasri getting that. No, uh, he deserved it. Yes, he absolutely deserved it. Also, uh, the T wolves this year, kind of a good team. Maybe, sure. maybe Ant is that guy. Who, who who foresaw this? He's quite good, Pete. You were going to say six, something. Yeah, I was going to say six man of the year is another one of those ones that feels like a 
quasi team award too. Like the fact that Minnesota overachieved, I think it's fair to say that they overachieved really sort of boosts Nas I think stock. That, I think that the, um, the reason why I actually support Nas Reed's getting the award is it's finally good to, for someone getting the six man of the year award. That is not guy who shoots the most and gets the most jumpers off the bench. Finally, we have someone who actually does something more than that. With yeah, it's not Jamal games. Crawford. It's not Sweet Lou Williams Jamal as Crawford. much as I love him. I mean, this is kind of Montrez Harrell, though. Like, Nas Reed's a better player than Montrez Harrell. He can actually shoot, and he plays better defense. Um, but he is a score-first power forward slash center. Like, this is not unprecedented. It, it's the dude who scores the most off the bench still. Um, and Nas at least got some starting minutes, and I think that helped his case, too, when Cat was hurt. Uh, but yeah, like offense first player, it, it's not going to be Alex Caruso, right? It's not going to be a de- uh, Jonathan Isaac, who is a defensive terror off the bench. Like those sorts of guys are not going to win this award. It's going to be a gunner. Um, it's just a gunner of a different sort this year, which kind of sucks. Like it's also a weird award just in general. Like who is the best player out of the, you know, players who you couldn't start, <laughs> who aren't good enough to start. Like it's, it's a bit of a weird award, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, most improved player, uh, Z- Pete, you had Austin Reeves, ZP, you had Franz Wagner, and I had Elpern and Shengun. Um, I was the only one who got someone in the top three, but we were all wrong because Ty- Tyrese Maxey won it. I mean, this award's always a crapshoot every year. Yeah. I feel good about getting in the top three. That's, that's all I, like, Maxey... We couldn't have predicted how long Embiid would get hurt, though we all predicted that Embiid would get hurt. Um, and I didn't. I frankly didn't see him making this big of a leap. I thought he'd be good, but not like clear cut All Star good. I have no idea how Austin Reeves, Austin Reeves' nickname on Basketball Reference, which are never true, regardless, but often funny, is Hillbilly Kobe. That's really good. That's a really good nickname. It's not that true is a at good all. Nickname. No. But I feel. Maybe. Yeah. I Go feel ahead, with Austin Reeves, the way that Lakers fans talk about Austin Reeves being this very necessary component to, to a contending team, really gives me the same vibes when we went through this song and dance with Lakers fans when they were talking about THT. I it's just. <laughs> I, I I still get flashbacks to when they thought that they could get multiple first round picks trading THT. And no, no, no. I will say Austin Reeves is better than THT, but yes, like he is a he is the sort of Taylor player Horton. that if Taylor Horton Tucker, if yeah. if um if he was on a different team, we wouldn't know him. No. Right? Like also if he weren't white, I don't think we would know him. That is also definitely fair, I think. Um, but yeah, like he had he had an entire press tour like of people saying he's going to be the next Lakers All Star, and it's like no, no. He's, have you seen him? Play? Did you see what happened when he was at international play? Like he played in the the uh, World Cup of Basketball for the U.S. and um, every team's plan against us was find Austin Reeves and score. Him. <laughs> It's bad. You don't want that to happen. Um, next up, Defensive Player of the Year. Pete, you had Drew Holiday. ZP, you had Evan Mobley. I had Bam Adebayo. I got someone in the top three, um, but it's almost certainly going to be Rudy Gobert. The year we, the year we stopped. Time. It's the year we stopped yep. believing in him. Yep. Yep. You heard this it. You listen to the podcast. Be... Put it on his bulletin board. Yeah, this might be the out. last year that Rudy Gobert has a real good claim because, oh boy, Victor is going to, if he can stay healthy, Victor is clearly who I think we're all going to pick for defensive player of the year. It's not even a joke. Like, Yeah, it's really going to be like which of us is too cowardly to bet on his health. That's the only thing. Dude can ball. <laughs> I mean, he's averaging like four blocks a game. 3.6, led the league. Yeah, it, as a rookie. As a rookie, and he, he was playing out of position 
for the first month or two of the season at power forward. Yeah, Jeremy Soshan uh, as his starting, what was it, power forward? Starting point guard. They started point him guard. at point guard for like two months. <laughs> it's like, what? Why? Why are you? Why are you doing this to Wemby? He doesn't deserve this. They How started you... him next to Zach Collins at center and Jeremy Sohan at point guard. What are we doing? Yeah. How many three pointers? How many three point attempts per game? I think Wemby has. I'm gonna guess seven. DP. Uh, I'm gonna go lower. Five, five and a half. Hey, ZP, you hit it on the nose. 5.5. 5. Damn. Chicken dinner. Way to go. Shot in the dark. But that's a lot. That's probably too many for a guy who shoots in the like mid-30s, mid to low-30s. Yeah, 325. That is too many threes, I would say, for Wemby. But I don't think the Spurs care. Let him do it. No. I, but yeah, like, um, yeah, good for Gobert. I think that he absolutely deserves it this year. Um but um, yeah, it's a, anyone who doesn't bet on on Wemby next year is a fool. One point um, two steals per game for Wemby too. Yeah, just ridiculous arms, ridiculous hand eye coordination. Honestly, did, how much Spurs basketball did either of you watch this year? More than I'm mm, willing to admit, because I just enjoy seeing Wemby play. Um, I do too. The one thing that jumped out at me watching the Spurs when I did this year was how much like Trey Jones is their starting point guard for like the back half of the year. And he is like the only player on their roster who thinks at all like a point guard. Um, And just the sheer difference of having a mediocre point guard and what that did to Wemby. I, I just cannot help but imagine what would happen if they had an actual point guard, like someone who was above average instead of well below average. Like there are so many lob attempts that his teammates just did not see because they didn't bother to look up he's he's got like a 10 foot standing reach just put it really high when he's near the hoop no one can get to it but him and they just refuse to do it like if they just manage a little bit of care just a little bit of attention he could average 30 i think pretty comfortably it's wild like he's so scary as a player um I've never seen anything like him. It's crazy. Um, then and it's, at that young of an age, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like he hasn't even put on muscle yet, and he's still this well, good. I'm just looking at the all-star rosters for this year, and like if he were in the East, he definitely would have made it, I feel like. But mm-hmm. even in the West, I feel like I might have put Wemby over Paul George. Put him over Cat. The answer is always put him over Cat. Yeah, Cat too. Yeah, like the fact that Sabonis didn't make it and Cat did is a travesty. Um, I even though I think Cat is a more useful playoff player than Sabonis, like who cares? Sabonis is regular season. That's what All Stars are for. Um, MVP, yeah. Pete, you had Giannis. ZP, you had Jason Tatum, and I rolled with uh, Nikola Jokic, the best player in the NBA. I think I'm going to get this one. You coward. <sighs> Um, we both, uh, failed to foresee Shea taking, we all failed to foresee Shea taking this big of a step forward. Um, and we're going to, one of us is going to have to pick Luca next year. I think it might yep. be me. I, I think it's the, not going to be me. So the Jokic voter fatigue is gonna like, he's going to probably win this year. And then next year, I don't know how it, I don't even know how he could put up the stats that would be necessary, um, for him to, to win it again. Is that That's but, three for Jokic, right? If he wins this year. Yes. It would be three. Yeah. So he's uh, he's really good. And I'm pretty sure he's going to win it. Um, coach of the year. We've got Pete. You picked Willie Green. ZP picked Mark Dagnalt. Um, and I picked Eric Spolstra. Uh, Pete, you were looking good for a bit. And then Zion <laughs> and Ingram and the injuries. And the every, the same thing that happens every year to the Pelicans happened. Yeah, I rolled the dice. Came up short. Uh, ZP, you're probably going to get this one. I am. I'm uh, surprised because it was looking pretty dire for a bit of a stretch, but then um, then things got good. Yeah, you you did the right thing. Like this award always goes to the coach of a young team who takes the leap. Um, yeah. I mean, they and... took a big leap too. I, yeah, I, I mean, they, I, they won I don't the West. Think that's, yes, they they won the West and rightfully so. Like that. 
who who yeah, we talked about who foresaw the previous big leap of Shea, but like come on man like the western conference has some very interesting young players that i i'm so excited to see take at least a little bit of the shine away from lebron and stuff i i i'm genuinely excited about the prospects of uh, the western conference not just being lakers versus warriors ever ever again i i'm i'm so happy couldn't be happier those teams how are many, going to have trouble making the playoffs. How many NBA fans, though, would you have? How many NBA fans do you think you would have to ask outside of Oklahoma City who the best team in the Western Conference is before somebody answered the Thunder? See, I, I feel like this is the problem of the NBA in general, where and the media, where what are the storylines that we keep getting barraged with? Um, and this is a point that I think others have brought up. You remember when the NBA and ESPN just would not stop force feeding us the the notion that Andrew Wiggins was going to be the next big player in the league. And they just kept yeah. spooning that into our mouth over and over and over again. They forced it down our throats, even when the evidence was pretty clear, pretty clear Andrew Wiggins is not that guy, but they kept the league and ESPN. All of your sports media just kept spoon feeding it into us. And then Giannis happened and then they stopped. So that's really what is going to need to happen is you just get more players. Um, that force that shake them away from those narratives that they sometimes just cannot get ripped away from. Yeah, they're they're banking right now on Anthony Edwards just being the next guy because he he plays like Jordan and Kobe did, um, and he's he's charismatic. He's like a he's really great on player. interviews. He's so good on interviews. Um, he is. He's look. I, there are worse players to try to prop up for sure, um, but yeah, that that's where it's gonna go next is Anthony Edwards. Um, I think that the Nuggets. We could agree they're just gonna be treated like the Spurs, right? Yeah, yeah. But they're just, just going to ignore it until they win the title again. Yeah, they're they're going to be boring. It, no one's going to cover them like a a super team because Jokic doesn't do interviews. Um, though he's getting ads now. At yeah, least. he's he's supporting them minions. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Is he's it, in Pete, did you see ads? this? Oh no. yeah. Oh god, can you post the link to that video and we see Pete react in in real time? Um, can, can you find it? Um, and I share just it with YouTube, MVP? right? Just like Jokic uh, minions ads. Uh, yes. d- Despicable Me Four. Jokic, Despicable Me Four. All right. All right. Let's. Uh, he also showed up to his game dressed as the person he is in this ad. Yeah. So first, watch this thirty-second uh, ad, and then look up his outfit. Um, <laughs> you show up to the game dressed as a crew. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right, watch this ad. Yeah, so I, I think Jokic is going to get some more. Um... <laughs> he does kind of look like Gru. He does. <laughs> He's like a better actor than I would have expected. Yes. <laughs> Look at all the minions. I would have expected that was good. I would have expected out of Jokic like when Boban was in John Wick. And it's just like it's funny because it's Boban, but he's terrible. And Jokic actually did pretty good there. Yeah, I mean his hotels dot com commercials aren't bad either. Um but yeah, I I'm glad that he's getting commercials. Like that's better than Tim Duncan got for the most part. Do you think he um, wanted them? Tim Duncan? No, he didn't. I still he wanted them even like less than Jokic does. That that Tim Duncan ad with Derrick Rose and they're making fun of the fact that neither of them are very charismatic <laughs> is still a very good ad. Derrick Rose has his own issues of why he's not charismatic. <laughs> but that that Foot Locker ad in particular where it's like, oh man, I think I'm going to 
tell Derek Rose the news that there's a new sale at, at Foot Locker. Oh, wow. I'm so excited. And then he's gently pushing over the uh, plant. And it's like, wow, he's so excited right now. And like that, that is the way that you make fun of like those. Man, I, I'm, I, uh, yep, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, but like, yeah, it's, it's really, this is on the media for not furthering the correct narratives and presenting to newcomers or people who are just general audience fans of basketball the correct players of the league and the correct teams in the league that are are leading the charge of uh keeping the sport healthy and alive yeah. that, that's, that's always... Perkins's fault somehow <laughs> yeah Kendrick isn't helping but like I think that it's just a little bit of the NBA is all about two to three star players that the media has sold people and not the teams um other than the Lakers whereas sports like the NFL like the NFL doesn't have a hard time selling Buffalo teams and Buffalo players when they're good or Detroit teams when they're good, you know, like you can have a great team in the NBA and it, people might not even know they won a title, you know, they definitely won't know some of their best players. And that just, I don't think happens quite as much with the NFL for whatever reason. Um, all right. So let's look at our playoff predictions. We Wait, have... Can I... Can I yes, throw man. one more fun fact out that I really like? Please do. Just because you mentioned the NFL. So do you know, like, the NFL takes up, like, a huge, massive amount of cultural real estate, obviously. But yes. do you know, like, on a revenue basis, the NFL is the same size as Sherwin-Williams paint? Is that a lot or a little? I don't know. <laughs> is, it's not a is, lot. Okay. Very small. Well, people got to paint a lot of stuff, I guess. That's true. But like, how often do you think about Sherwin Williams? Every day. All right. Well, you're you're a lunatic. I obviously, this is like the the Roman Empire question for G. I love paint. It's, <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, what other question on Coach of the Year? Just before we move over, um, Eric Spolstra is just never going to win, huh? He's just going to be I the mean, best coach in the NBA, and everyone knows it for like a decade, and he's just never going to win because his team's never doubted enough. <laughs> it's cold in Pat Riley's shadow. Yeah, it's it's wild to me. Like, every year he loses it to some coach. Like, like Mike Brown winning it last year is like, dang, he took this incredibly healthy team to the third position in the incredibly injured Western Conference. What I, a guy. I, I, and then I, loses I also... in the first round. I, I also have to point this out is uh, re- remember two years ago, the NBA celebrated its 75th anniversary. Right. And it had all these in quotations, definitive lists. OK. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, you know, Eric Spoltra is on that list, but he's like at the tail end, like next to Jerry Sloan and Lenny Wilkins Sloan. and slight and slightly above him. Doc Rivers. It's it's very funny to me that just in like a year after that list comes out, how uh, you know it's it's very funny to me that we're talking about like Doc Rivers actually might be ruining the Bucks. Well, he's and... not ruining them. He's just not elevating them because he's like a pretty. He's Doc coach. Rivers, but then also Eric's. That's that's the tier of coach coaching greatness that he's oftentimes lopped in with. Yeah. It's like Jerry Sloan, Lenny Wilkins, and Doc Rivers. Did anyone outside of Utah ever like Jerry Sloan? No. Of course not. Yeah, what a nightmare he was. Okay, yeah. I just Bemoaning the fact that Eric Spolster is probably never going to win this award because it's an expectations award and not a actual coaching quality award is <laughs> annoying. Um. Eastern Conference playoffs. Let's see how he did. Pete, you had Celtics, uh, Bucks, 76ers, Knicks, Pacers, Bulls, Heat, Cavs. So you had the Bulls in the place that the Magic should have had. How dare you talk me off of the Magic, you jerks. I mean, come on. Who thought the Magic? And the five seed for the Magic? <sighs> I w- but I would have sounded so prescient if I got it right. Um ZP, you had the Celtics, Bucks, Heat, Cavs, 76ers, Nets, Knicks, Bulls. That's so you were missing the Pacers and the um, and the Magic. 
Um, I had Celtics, Bucks, Cavs, Knicks, Heat, 76ers, Nets, Raptors. Oof. Ow. Ouch. Hey, so hey you know what? Pistons. Good on the Raptors finally blowing it up, though. I, I, yeah. I feel like it was a long time coming and it needed to happen eventually. And they finally did it. Yeah, I was I was anticipating that they were going to death march themselves into eighth into the eighth seed. Um, but no, they, they blew it up. They officially blew it up. And the Nets, I need to stop believing it. I need to stop believing people who are like, this team's all wings. Look at how many good defensive players. Look at this. Like, if you don't have an offensive engine on your team, I don't really care. Unless you're a top one or two defense, I don't care. Um, I, I think it was that and then also realizing that Mikhail Bridges actually can't be a, the number one option to a team. He's a good number three option. Yes. At best. He's, he's a great number three option. Um, but yeah, number one, he's way overtaxed. Um, also, RIP Ben Simmons' career. Uh, Western Conference <sighs> playoffs. Pete, you had Nuggets, Suns, Warriors, Clippers, Mavs, Pelicans, Grizzlies, Kings. So, bye bye. Oh, off the Lakers. Yep. Bye bye, Warriors. Bye bye, Grizzlies. Bye bye, Kings. Um, do you do you think? Man, I know this is for the next podcast. How are we all going to rank the Grizzlies for next season? They're gonna I have no else. idea. I have no idea how to even like process them as a team for next year. I think they're a playoff, a pretty clear playoff team. Now, are they like the eight seed? Maybe. I think a lot of teams got a lot better. But how do you predict whether or not like what what level of commitment you can bank on Jaw? Like, I I don't know. No clue. No clue. Um, I don't know how much he's going to play. Like, he had surgery that cost him the season. He's not played basketball in almost a year. Um, hard to say. But I, I can't – I can see the Lakers not making the playoffs. I mean, I will go over our predictions. I had them not making the playoffs this year. Like, I think there are some old teams uh, that are ripe to be taken out. And I think there's some very mediocre teams that uh, – are have no guarantee of making the playoffs again. Um, ZP, you had the nugget. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm not entirely sold on the idea that the Lakers are completely out of the picture just because Anthony Davis on defense is just that good. I think they'll make the play in. It's just no foregone conclusion that they'll make the playoffs. It makes things so hard, right? Like if you want to make the play in, you generally can in both conferences. Um, so then chaos can happen in best of one games. Uh, Pete, do you, what do you think the Grizzlies are going to do? Do you think they step back in like they never left? I mean, or? I feel like I've always been sort of irrationally high on the Grizzlies, but I think they're back in the playoffs. It, I mean, it's like you said, you know, it's basically how much rust can Ja knock off and has he gotten rid of all his guns? If the answer to both of those are yes, I think they're definitely back in. Okay, ZP, you had Nuggets, Warriors, Suns, Clippers, Thunder, Kings, Pelicans, Wolves. So you had the Thunder, good good work, um, but you unfortunately had the Warriors and the Kings. But you were the closest, I think. Um, yeah. I had the Nuggets, Suns, Clippers, Mavs, Pelicans, Grizzlies, Kings, Wolves. So I was wrong about the Grizzlies and the Kings. So we were tied on how many we hit. Um but yeah, I I did not believe in the Thunder, and that was my biggest my biggest miss for sure. Um, and then the champs, Pete had Nuggets Bucks, uh, with the Bucks winning. ZP, you had Nuggets Celtics with the Celtics winning. Uh, no, I, with the Nuggets winning, with the Nuggets winning. And I had Nuggets Bucks with the Nuggets winning. So I think I'm going to win this. I think that's honest. I think that's the most likely finals outcome. You can joke about so. how the. You can joke about how the Celtics just always have these weird brain farts where they lose games horribly, randomly, in the most inconvenient of times. But they were pretty definitively the best team in the East, and I don't know if that's going to change anytime soon. No. Unless, no, you know, the Pacers get a lucky bounce, and, I mean, game four, what is it, Giannis and Dame are going to be out, so may they might be able to go 3-1 against the Bucks, which is a insurmountable chance of that getting better. Um, huge props to, you know, 
OKC maybe being a lot better than what we thought they would be. And uh, hey, the T-Wolves humiliating the Suns. Oh, goodness. It's been great. I love it. I've, I'm going to watch yep. this game tonight just to watch. Man. I, mm, I want to see the Suns get swept. I do, too. What an I wanna awful see team. It. What an ugly, disgusting team. I, <laughs> that They are maybe my least favorite team composition and indictment of analysts that I've ever seen. Like, I'm going to take – we're going to take three of the same guy. One of them is slightly taller. But three of the same freaking guy. Like, dudes who are secondary creators, score first, ball hogs. And we're going to put them on the same team. And guess what? We're going to surround them with Yusuf Nurkic and Grayson Allen. And then the worst bench you've ever seen in your life. Just like a bunch of complete, just replacement level players. And and we're going to convince you that we're a serious team. Like they can't I mean, run basic offense. The only thing Yusuf Nurkic ever did that I liked was get punched in the face by Draymond Green. That and then him continually uh, kind of like openly reference that. It's like, yeah. I just like, why did people think this was going to be the ba- the greatest offense ever? Like how many different dudes getting mid range pull-ups do you think makes the greatest offense <laughs> ever? And then toss in Grace and Allen. Yeah. It's like, look, they're going to get whatever shot they want. As long as it's a mid range pull-up, like what? They would have to all shoot like 60% on mid-range pull-ups at the same time for that to be a good offense. And it was like a fine offense because you have a bunch of really good players, uh, really good shooters. But like this year taught me more than any that um, tough shot making is an essential skill but an overrated skill. Like easy shot creation beats tough shot making nine times out of ten, I feel like. And – the Suns just had no one who made easy shots for other people. They just had a bunch of people who could make tough shots. And congratulations. You you shot the most hezzy pull-up Jimbos. Um, <laughs> and, That's real know, hoopers, Gino. That's what real and, hoopers do. Yes. Just like real hoopers do, you did like a half spin into a fadeaway, throwing your arms up, begging for a call as like Anthony Edwards is running the other direction, dunking on you. Oh, man. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, the, the Timberwolves, what they're doing to the Suns is just – it's beautiful to watch. Like, oh, man, these guys are unstoppable one-on-one. In, in fact, stoppable. Yeah. <laughs> Quite stoppable. If you want uh, the, the an actual – because the term gets used so loosely these days. If you want to actually see what the word lockdown defense means actually, like actually in practice, just watch – uh, any of the games against uh, the Suns that the T-Wolves have had. Just locking down people that we've previously been repeatedly told cannot be locked down. KD, he's too much of a threat on the perimeter. You can't stop him. Nah, it's been mostly good for them. He's low-key, to... like, got a loose handle. Um, and you can pick that. And he's not, like, he's a good secondary or ternary playmaker if he's initiating your offense it's a problem um because he's not comfortable doing that and they're just continually getting roasted because of this stuff like those guys it's too hard what they're asking them to do is too hard um who to could have foreseen a... this <laughs> who can you name for me like a less likable legitimate superstar than durant are we saying that Devin Booker isn't a legitimate superstar, so he can't be less likable? You think I think Kevin Durant's less likable than Devin Booker? Yeah, oh, I, I would know. actually agree with Pete. I think that Devin Booker he talks so much smack for someone who like made the finals because everyone else was hurt. And, and, he got and pissed and off that people were double him in practice. I I feel like I say this a lot, but say what you will about the Celtics, um, but. <laughs> Jason Tatum is a likable person. He's a nice guy. He's got that he smile that everybody likes. Yeah, Durant just seems like an un an unlikable dude. Like if you offered me the chance to meet Durant, I might turn it down just because he seems like a jerk. 
I don't know. First off, Kyrie Irving's the right answer. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't even think of him. Obviously, hey, he is hey, the right answer. Hey, 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 hey. This was maybe the quietest good season of Kyrie Irving we've ever seen. And hey, surprise, surprise, his team benefited from it. I'm sure this will go on. <laughs> and <laughs> almost certainly continue. And if we're going to dunk on, like, the Phoenix Suns just, like, uh, perpetually falling apart, like, how many more times are we going to have to listen to this being the year for the Clippers? Because, uh, ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're the same team. Just like how many injured, old, su- washed up superstars can we put on the same team with no clear idea of how these players will like improve each other? How? How many? Uh, it's they're so expensive to be so bad. No, I think I proposed this to Gino, so I'm going to propose this theory to Pete. Um, sure. When you stop and look at it. And you stop and think about what they've accomplished in their coaching careers. Is it not necessarily – it's less appropriate to put Doc Rivers in the pantheon of the 15 greatest coaches of all time in the, the history of the sport. Like, Jesus Christ. But would you not start to consider presenting Tyron Liu as being an equal to Doc Rivers in terms of what they contrib- – what their style of coaching, being the player-oriented coach – and then also, like, I don't know, Tyron Lou looks a lot more enticing if you want a player-oriented coach than goddamn Doc Rivers. Way For sure. Star. I mean, there's a reason yeah. why Ty Lue hasn't been fired. There, I mean, like, from, from a purely coaching perspective, right? And, like, Lord knows, I don't know what X's and O's they're drawing up in practice. But from a purely coaching perspective, I think they're about equivalent. And then if you go with Tyron Lou, you don't have all the – dumb Doc Rivers baggage that you just have to put up with constantly. Yeah, that's fair. Um, can I do one last uh, grave digging on the Suns? Sure. Sure. Just one last thing. Um, Bradley Beal yep. uh, is going to be making, I believe, $64 million a year in three years. That's That's for one year, a single year of Bradley Beal. Of Bradley Beal. And... Uh, do you, do you uh, remember he has a no trade clause? Wonderful. What would the cap? What would the cap have to be for that to be worth it? Well, I think he's an average, uh, like a league average shooting guard in aggregate. Um, so uh, let let me ask this question this way: um, Would you rather have Contavious Caldwell Pope or Bradley Beal? Just straight up, just like their skill sets. Oh, just straight up. Yeah, just like you know, playing take, on a team. Let's say you have a good a good player, like and I have one infinite. I have infinite dollars. You have infinite mm. dollars. Which player? Just their skill set, and you already have a good. Let's say you have, like he's not your engine, right? He's not your best player. He's he's going to be a role player on the team. I mean, this is longer than we should have to think for somebody making sixty k. He's making a super max contract, basically. I gotta look up Contavious Caldwell Pope stats. I mean, KCP is a massive plus defender. He shoots open threes and he doesn't ball hog. Well, that's my next question: is like, do I have to worry about who's going to be happy with this role I'm saddling them with? Of course you do. That's part of the problem. Yeah, then I'd probably take Pope. Like, part of the problem with Bradley Beal is that he doesn't want to just be the spot up guy and occasionally attack. Like. He- he wants to be a superstar, but he can't guard anyone and doesn't try to all that much. Uh, like, like, I think you probably just want league average defensive defense first shooting guard before you want him. If you have a team that's good, if you have a team that's bullshit and he's <laughs> going to be like Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan and just like, look at these stats he's putting up on this team that's never going to win shit. Then Brad Beal probably, you know, sells tickets better. But if you actually want to win games, I don't think you want Bradley Beal on your team. Um, Not period. this version like, of Bradley Beal. Uh, no, no, clearly, no, I don't think you do. So yeah, shout outs to the the light years ahead Phoenix Suns for trading everything they had uh, for this team um, and for Bradley Beal, a player they will not be able to move. This is also the most I've thought about the Suns the entire season, like by far. Lucky you. Uh, well, I've been thinking about them, but mostly about how I wanted Just to talk Aiden. about how shitty they are. 
Yep. What a garbage team. Uh, speaking of, let's make our predictions uh, for the for the series and for the how the rest of the playoffs will play out. That's we've got uh, some easy ones and some harder ones. So let's start off with the one, uh, the eight one in the East. Uh, what do we think, Celtics? Celtics Heat. Who do we think is going to win? Celtics. 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 Everyone says Celtics. Hooray! Uh, Bucks. Oh no, it's not Bucks Pacers. Uh, Knicks Seventy Sixers. What do you think? I'm gonna go Sixers. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be an optimist. I'm gonna go okay. with the Knicks. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with the Knicks also. So we got two Knicks, one Seventy Sixers. Bucks Pacers. What do we think? I think it's gonna be the Pacers. Yeah, the injuries are getting to be too much for the Bucks. It'll be the Pacers. They they're um, literally going to have to play game four, no Giannis, no Dame. Like so that means this series is probably gonna go three one. So unless like yo not no Jokic. Uh unless Giannis can like suddenly heal the fastest that a man has ever healed before. Um no. I don't I don't see it happening. Unless he's Willis Reed, but like actually able to contribute to that game. Not just show up and be scary because yeah. he's out there. Um, yeah, I'm going to say also Pacers just because of the injuries. Um, I have a hard time seeing the Bucks pulling out another win or two if Giannis and Dame are both not playing. Um, and the uh, real the most, hard one, the most probably. boring series. Yeah, who possible. cares? Cavaliers magic. Can we eliminate both? No. Uh, magic. Uh, I'll go Cavs. I have a hard time with this because they're kind of the same team. Yeah. They're all defense, no offense, but the Cavs at least are a little bit better on offense. However, the Cavs have so much quit in them. <laughs> They've got the least dog. Yes, they are They are thick with quit, and I don't know what to do with that because Donovan Mitchell doesn't want to be there anymore. And it's very clear. So he might just quit. Like, they might just quit on this. Like, they've lost two games in dispiriting fashion now that they've gone to Orlando. But I don't want to be, like, prisoner of the moment on this one. Um, So the Cavs are probably better. But, man, I don't want to believe in them. I want to believe in love. I'm going to go with the magic. Nice. Even though I acknowledge that the Cavs are the superior team, I just... If a team just shows this much to quit, I can't. I can't buy in them on them. Um, Thunder Pelicans. Thunder. Yep. Yep. Same here. Thunder. Thunder by a lot. Um, yep. it, this would have been interesting if Zion was playing, um, but he's not. So don't need to care about it. Um, so, uh, Nuggets Lakers. I'm not even willing to pick the Lakers to troll you, Gino. I mean, yeah. That's how. Much better than Nuggets are. Denver. Okay, then we've got the um, Timberwolves Suns. Wolves. Is, T Wolves. Wolves. Is this a sweep? Yes. Okay. Uh, selfishly, I want it to not be a sweep just so the Timberwolves have to play more games, but uh, yeah, I think it's a sweep. The Suns suck shit. Um, Clippers, Mavs. Mavs. Yeah. Mavs. Yeah, I'm going to go Mavs, too. Um, I just don't. You you can't make me believe in Kawhi Leonard. The Clippers are so James depressing. Westbrook. And Russell Westbrook. Yeah, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook. yeah you, you can't make me believe in them. Um, okay, then the next rounds, we we would end up with uh, Celtics-Knicks for ZP and I. Oh, no, not Celtics-Knicks. It would be uh, Knicks-Pacers and Celtics-Magic or Cavs. So... I think we would all pick the Celtics over whoever the hell comes out of Cavs magic. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't matter. Um, and then Knicks, Knicks Pacers. Knicks. Unless, yeah, unless Tibbs has uh, officially caused everyone to have powder on their knees and there's no more cartilage to spare. Yeah, that's the thing. And then 76ers Pacers, what would you pick, Pete? I'd, I'd pick the Pacers because I can't trust JoJo to make it through two series. Yeah, that's I'm usually sure. where they top out, though. Yeah, yeah. It's like the whole. God, I just, like did I just knees... put the Pacers in the conference finals? Yeah, you did. You did Jesus? Um, <laughs> you put maybe 
one of the most atrocious defenses I've ever seen my entire life. They're still giving Buddy Heald starting minutes. I, mm. Okay. You know? Okay, so we've got, uh, <laughs> on the east, according to Pete, uh, Pacers, Celtics. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to happen. Put your bets in now. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm going to go with the Knicks also. I'm going to go with the Knicks also. Um, and then we've got uh, the finals, conference finals. We've got uh, – we would have Knicks-Celtics in our world. Celtics, I think, win. Yep. Um, and then Pacers. Do you think they beat the Celtics, Pete? Yeah, as much as I want to just go you know, whole hog and just commit to the bit, I'll, I'll still pick the Celts. Yeah. I, I, I would love to see the Knicks – Celtic series just because it's one team that's very much front runners and the other team is just like they just want to stab you um and I feel like that's a good that'll be a fun series to watch if it happens okay then in the west we would have uh Thunder Mavs I'll go with Thunder that might be the, the actual first series that might be a lot of fun to watch uh <sighs> I might go. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Thunder too. Okay, Thunder over the Mavs. We could just seem so unfun to be around too. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think I'm going to go Mavs here. Okay, I think I'm going to go Mavs in Thunder Mavs just because I don't trust the th- the Thunder are very young. That's True. I don't trust that, and I don't think they have anyone to guard uh, Luca. Pachetta. Well, like even Dort's really good. I just don't know that he can guard Luca. Like he's he's just such a better player than freaking Brandon Ingram. That's another player who I would love a soapbox to just talk about how much I hate how he plays. Um but not today. Um then we've got Wolves Nuggets. Another Nuggets. series that I, I'm praying actually happens because I want to see this. Ah uh, boy. Um that's the Nuggets. That would be a cool series though. Yeah, I think that'll be maybe the de facto NBA Finals. Um, I, I, I'm i going to go Nuggets, but that's going to be a great series if it happens. Um, and then uh, Nuggets, Thunder? Uh, nuggets. ZP? Nuggets. They're just young. I'm going go I mean, you to I'm gonna go Nuggets over Mavs. And then we get to the Finals that... At least one of us or two of us predicted. What do we think? Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty good finals. I'd, I'd probably pick the Nuggets to repeat. I don't see why you wouldn't. I'm going to pick the Nuggets to repeat. I mean, I locked it at the beginning of the year. It would be dumb to abandon ship at this point. The bragging, the bragging equity alone... It's just, I can't abandon that. All right. I just so feel, all... I feel bad for Jokic. You know, he spends so much time away from his horses. He does. He does. Man. Ugh. I hope that this plays out like this. Um, there's a lot less suspense this year than I thought there would be, considering how much parity there is. But, yeah, some of these teams just uh, kind of fraudulent, unfortunately. Um. But yeah, that's our NBA playoffs preview, and I guess like in view, like they're happening, <laughs> so <laughs> you have something to go off of. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. our year in review, and we might be back to talk about some final stuff, or we might do another show if, if it tickles our fancy. Uh, but otherwise, that's the 2024 season. What a, It was a good one. What a, Any closing thoughts on the season? Anything that stood out? I, I, mean, I think- feel good about the new generation mm. even if i don't think that they're getting their proper shine with the biggest speaker phones in the media i feel good i feel great that neither the lakers nor the warriors will be going past the second round yeah that's pretty great pete what any closing thoughts on the season 
I thought, I thought it was a good one. I think the Thunder are the story, even if they, as EP said, are taking up too much bandwidth. I think my re- biggest concern right now is expansion. I think it's definitely coming, and it's coming fast, and I think it'll be a mistake. Um, we we also, I, I want to just, I don't know how either of you two feel about this, but I want to point out that we recorded a basketball podcast without any mention of the fact that this is the most exciting time to watch the WNBA. I yes. think True. that I'm going True. to watch the most number of WNBA games that I'll ever watch just by the sheer fact that Caitlin Clark will be there. Uh, Jojo will be there or um, this is a great time to be a basketball fan. And it is. Um, in whatever way great. you consume it in every way that you can consume it and which ever league you commit to to consume it like and also please please watch a wnba game when you have the chance they're good they're fun definitely check it out yeah i i mean my takeaway from this season is um i think we're at the death of the trade everything to get two star three stars together era all of the teams that went all in on trading for random dudes to to shove together into one team they're all suffering the cavaliers we've talked about how much quit they have um they are going to lose sooner rather than later i think um the suns are an abomination the uh clippers went even all in er and they're probably going to lose in the first round maybe the second round like they do not look like a scary team Basically, all of the great teams right now are homegrown. Like the Celtics core is largely homegrown players. Um, they traded for some finishing pieces, some role players, but their their core is Tatum and Brown, who they both drafted. The Nuggets drafted their three best players and then traded for two role players in KCP and Aaron Gordon. Um, the, the Bucks also super team move, you know, trading for Damian Lillard, just not looking well. Thunder drafted everyone of importance on their team. Uh, and well, they traded for Shea when they traded away Paul George. So like, but Shea was in their system since he was like, what, a rookie or second year player. So pretty homegrown. Um, yeah, a lot of these get rich quick teams just have not panned out. The teams that actually exercised patience largely have been doing much better. Even the Timberwolves, like Ant and Cat, their internal growth has done a lot. And then Rudy, uh, and, um, Jaden McDaniels and uh, Nas Reed, all homegrown players. So, yeah, patience, patience, and taking your team mm. step by step, and not trying to skip steps. Like that is, I think, the takeaway from this year. Do you disagree, ZP? I don't know how we're going to look at the Rudy Gobert trade. Does he need to have at least one more good season before we uh, stop calling it the worst trade? And- the history of the league. Like I, I already feel like it's not the worst. Um, it's definitely I on the come up. It's on the come up. I think that they need to win a title and then it's fine. If they win a title, it's fine. But big if it's uh it is a big ask, but I think that, you know, they traded so much of their future. Like that's the stakes, right? True. Yeah. Like this is, this is the year where this is supposed to look good, the best. They are going to have to pay people next season. So this team will almost certainly not look like this mm-hmm. next year. Um, so this is the year where they should win a title or do really well. Maybe next year Rudy's not declining yet too much. And so it carries forward, but the ramifications of this deal are in three, four, five years. And so that it's a little bit hard to absolve them of how win now this move was. Uh, but if they win now, Hey, it works out just like the Lakers AD trade, right? Like, you know, the banner hangs forever. Um, even if they gave up their whole future to do it, or or the Bucks, uh, Drew Holiday trade looks fine, even though they gave up a lot of value for doing it. Um, all right, I think that that does it for our NBA uh, playoff podcast. Um, reminder: you can get in touch with the show at Deep Listens Pod on Twitter, deeplistens.libson.com. We have our comment sections and Deep Listens Podcast at gmail.com. You can support the show on Patreon.com/slash Deep Listens. Get in there; stuffs stuffs happening. Um, thank you, ZP. I'm always glad to be uh, here talking about uh, such great uh, events like um, 
that hustle Westbrook or that stuff Curry, the seven Durant, LeBron games, maybe tragic Bronson, the play Thompson. That, that NBA, not NBA deck builder that I played. I, I did, time. and I'll, I'll tell you, it was very rude when I saw Lame Lillard. <laughs> and Lillard only had two L's, the one at the start and the one in the middle. But it was very funny seeing Pale George. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I actually found a, a different variant of Shy, and it was called... I wrote this down. I wrote this down. I had to. The Marvelous Roxanne. What? Yeah. Yeah. What does that even mean? D Iron Fox. D E E dash Iron Fox. Amazing. Pete, this game is terrible. You should probably still play it. <laughs> it's a free to play deck builder. Uh, where it they costs have... zero money. It costs I zero money. It. You can get Jural Jer- Embed and other great recognizable players. Um, and Pete, any closing thoughts? Nope. Just always a pleasure to talk hoops with fellow hoops knowers. Awesome. Well, thanks, everyone. Till next time. Peace.